so this is the Rubifoil aquaponics system. Uh, aquaponics is basically just taking aquaculture, which is fish farming, and hydroponics, which is growing plants in water, and putting them together. So the waste from the fish gets used as the growing water for the plants, and the plants filter out the water so it can be reused and recirculated back to the fish. So the waste of one system becomes the input for the other. So in this system, we've got a thousand liter rearing tank for the fish, for the fish lift. And then this pipe, the water enters this pipe near the bottom. So any solids that are in the tank will get sucked up and lifted through this pipe to this barrel, which is the uh, solids filter. So the water from the rearing tank flows up and over this pipe. This bottomless bucket uh, lets the solids settle and start to fall to the bottom of the barrel. And it can be collected and composted later. And then on the surface we have the overflow pipe, which goes to the grow bed. So this is the hydroponics portion of the system. This is where the plants grow. And um, we've got a clay ball medium. So the clay ball, is, these make a nice place for the plants to be planted. It's, it's a physical structure for the plants. So it's, it's kind of like planting in soil. You just move some aside, put the plant in there, and keep it, keep it going. Um, but the other aspect of the clay balls is that they have lots of little holes in them a tremendous amount of surface area. And that surface area makes a really nice home for the two types of bacteria that clean and convert the ammonia, that's the fish excrete, and it turns it first into nitrites, and then it turns it into nitrates. So these two bacteria are the biofilter, biofiltration component of the system. And they actually live everywhere in the system, but most of them are gonna be in these clay balls media. Another thing you need to do to treat water is you need to aerate it. You need to get oxygen back into the water. And the way that works in this system is this is a reciprocating or an ebb and flow type of system. And all that means is that as these grow beds fill and they get to the high point, there is a flush mechanism. So the water level comes up, it gets to the top, and then the whole tank flushes down into the sump tank below it. And it does that via the standpipe mechanism. So there's a, there's a standpipe there, and then this is essentially an auto siphon valve. There's this sump header pipe that connects all three sumps as uh, so they all at the same level. These are the rubber couplings so that the tanks don't have to be super precisely located. These are just to support the water weight of the header so that that weight isn't hanging off of the connection. This right here is the connection between the sump header and the tank and the tank fittings. There's the smaller of the two O-rings uh, in here, uh, 67 millimeter OD. Uh, if you ever need to take this off, careful. Uh, the water flow will probably try to push the O-ring out. Uh, this fitting is just hand tight as tight as you can get it, but hand tight seemed to do the trick. I didn't need to use any tools. And then uh, this fitting, which goes directly into the tank molded plastic threaded fitting, uh, has another O-ring in it. It's the larger O-ring, 70 millimeter, 70 millimeter OD. Um, the fitting actually wanted a T-gasket, but uh, rubber O-ring seemed to do the trick. Also, just hand tight. As hand tight as you can get it, but hand tight seemed to do the trick. We have three pumps in sump number one. The rule of thumb is that you want to turn over the volume of the rearing tank about once an hour. We've got a thousand liter rearing tank, so we want the flow to be about a thousand liters per hour. Each of these pumps is about 500 liters per hour. So we want two running, and then we have one as backup in case one of the first two fail. Currently, you should know that you can't get the pumps out unless you just scoot this up 
but this scoots up fine, it's okay. And at the moment, um, there's the pumps that are mounted to a board, and then uh, on the inlet side, they are connected to a filter mechanism. I use these pantyhose as the filter mechanism. Um, these pumps need to be submerged. They need to be below the level of the water. They are not self-priming pumps, so don't have the pumps above the level of the sump. Um, they want to be submersible, so just make sure that they're in the actual tank. At the far end of the system, we have the control box. So the way it's set up right now, we have the AC main coming in from this hole over here, coming to the plugs. We have the AC to DC converter, which goes to the DC bus. And then we have switches for the two main pumps. And then this controls the emergency pump. We also have some goodies. We have extra filters. We have extra o-rings for the sump header. And we have the water testing kit. The testing kit uh, has tests for ammonia levels, nitrite levels, nitrate levels, and pH levels. Um, which are all things that you want to make sure in safe ranges for fish and for plants. So that concludes the tour of the hydroponic system. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Thanks.